first we talk about incest incest is having sexual relation within blood relations and this is not there is no law against incest in india so it is not a punishable offense it's a social cause adultery is defined and punishable in section 497 ipc of india okay and how is adultery defined adultery is defined as a male having sexual intercourse with a married female without the connivence of her husband is said to be committing adultery for which the male will be punished for an imprisonment up for up to 5 years and for with the same offense female as an abettor to crime shall not be punished okay this is how adultery is defined now talking about rape which is the main concept in the natural sexual offenses okay uh we know that definition of rape comes in section 375 of ipc okay which has traditionally been defined but it has been redefined now as per crpc amendment act 2013 you know reforms have come into the definitions of uh rape and punishments for it okay these reforms will be supplied to you online also along with the question paper which will compare the previous definition and the newer definitions okay so we are as of now not discussing it it will come along with the question paper as a comparable asset this is an important topic so you need to read them also fine now talking about rape traditionally we know that ipc 375 has the definition of rape and ipc 376 has punishment for the same okay now when we talk about rape what are the other ipcs or what are the other punishments linked with it fine one important punishment linked with rape comes in ipc 228a this is an important punishment associated with rape which says that uh which says that anybody taking the real name of the rape victim in any kind of media not without her permission or consent may be imprisoned for a punishment of up to 2 years of imprisonment okay now another law a very important concept associated with rape is section 114 indian evidence act Now what does section 114 or 114 Indian Evidence Act says it says that if a female in India alleges that she has been raped her allegation is accepted as such she does not need to prove it so what happens is because her allegation is accepted as such and she does not need to prove it because she is prosecution she is the pers- uh, female who is alleging the charges the burden of proof falls upon the defendant the male needs to prove that he did not do it okay and thus rape case is a classical example which is deviation from normal we have talked earlier that in a criminal case where the prosecution alleges the charges it is the burden of the prosecution to prove the charges the defense only need to defend the charges but in rape it is vice versa the prosecution does not need to prove the charges the defendant need to prove that he did not do it and that power to prosecution or the female comes from 114 indian evidence act okay then there is a very peculiar manner in which in which a rape case is tried in a court house or a court room and that is called as an in camera trial okay that is called as an in camera trial what is an in camera trial the day where the victim needs to come and depose her side of evidence to the court the judge asks everybody else present in the court to move out so that victim can come and speak freely okay she is given all the privilege to speak freely about the act 
and who are all these people who have to move out of the court there could be media person sitting in the court there could be other people with their own lawyer sitting in the court waiting for their turn to come for their own trials they have to move out the victim when she comes to the court to depose her side of witness who remains in the court is judge his staff the victim the prosecution lawyer the defendant and the defense lawyer okay this kind of a trial is called as in camera trial okay now when a rape victim comes to police station and alleges an fir that she has been raped okay one of the most important things for a police officer to do at that point of time is to get her medically examined okay and when she comes for a medical examination two or three very important samples which should be preserved from each rape victim is number 1 her clothings okay her clothings are collected by a technique called as no touch technique nobody touches her clothes she is made to stand on a white piece of paper she undresses herself and the clothes fall on to the piece of paper on from which she walks out the paper is folded sealed in toto and sent for analysis okay this is how clothings are preserved second are the vaginal swabs three vaginal swabs are preserved one a low vaginal swab along with the smear labeled so second a high vaginal swab along with the smear labeled so and third a perineal swab along with the smear which acts as a control and uh, everything is respectively labeled and third important evidence collection becomes pubic hair okay when we inspect pubic hair there could be three kind of pubic hair there one is the intact pubic hair which definitely belongs to the victim herself they need to be plugged out labeled separately and sealed separately they serve as a control second could be loose pubic hair which may belong to the victim or the assailant they are combed out labeled and sealed separately and third are matted pubic hair which could be due to ejaculation they are cut below the matting labeled and sealed separately okay so three techniques are used for collecting collection of pubic hair plucking combing and cutting okay these are important piece of evidences that should be sealed in every case now when a doctor examines a rape victim he notes down any injuries which are present on the body or any genital injuries which are present locally and then after noting it down onto the piece of paper comes to a portion where he needs to write an opinion okay he needs to write an opinion in regards to whatever examination has occurred what opinion does he write now rape has a legal definition so doctor has no right to write on a piece of paper saying that a female has been raped what is anticipated out of a medical examination of a rape victim is whether the signs or the injuries are suggestive of forceful sexual intercourse or not so as we were talking what a doctor needs to write on a piece of paper it's not the legal a doctor cannot say or doctor cannot write that the female has been uh, raped what he comes uh, has to come up in an opinion is whether the signs are consistent with forceful sexual penetration or forceful sexual intercourse or not whether this forceful sexual intercourse amounts to rape or not will have to be decided in the court by the judge okay this sort of opinion should be given in a rape case